A number of my uploads cover the beginning of a sensational 1941 combat diary from a platoon leader of the SS formation that would become the 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich. My Patreon supporters, who made the purchase of this collection possible, asked to see some background content covering the unit before Operation Barbarossa, so that's what this video covers. This footage shows the occupation of Austria in 1938, which was the first action the SS unit saw outside of Germany. I will show some ultra-rare color footage. We'll see footage from the Polish campaign. And at the end of the video, I'll show combat footage of the newly formed Waffen-SS divisions during the 1940 campaign in the West. So stick around. It's worth it. This rare color footage was taken in 1938 in Innsbruck, Austria, or the province that was called Ostmark during the Third Reich. It has a runtime of just over 37 minutes. In addition to providing general security for the NSDAP, the Schutzstaffel, or SS, also had the representative responsibilities of taking part in Nazi party political events, parading, guarding monuments, and ceremonial duties during visits from foreign representatives. The symbolic responsibilities were important to the Nazi party. However, in the eyes of most of the German military, the SS were nothing more than stylish pavement pounders. This didn't sit well with the paramilitary organization's leader, Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler. In 1934, the SS Verfügungstruppe, or SSVT, was formed with the intention of it becoming the combat troops of the Nazi party. Himmler even dreamed of it eventually, possibly, replacing the Wehrmacht altogether. During a Reichstag speech given on March 16, 1935, Hitler made the formation of the SSVT public, which undoubtedly made many of the army generals nervous. After all, only about a year earlier, with the Night of the Long Knives and the assassination of Ernst Röhm, was the SA finally cut down to size. The professional army had supported this putsch in order to supposedly remain the primary bearer of arms for the German nation. Would they now have to compete with a growing SS? Throughout the Third Reich, Hitler played the different power factions off against each other to his own advantage, and competition between the Wehrmacht and the Waffen-SS was one of the principal, reoccurring power struggles. The SSVT was made up of three regiments, and each regiment would contain three battalions, a mortar company, and a motorcycle company. In 1936, looking to provide the trainees with quality military training, Himmler named Lieutenant General Paul Hauser, a capable former army officer, to become the inspector of the SSVT. He is given credit for planting the seed which would eventually take hold and convert the formations from paramilitary into military units. By September 1st of 1939, when war broke out, the SS military formations under Himmler's command included the Leibstandarte Adolf Hitler, Hitler's personal bodyguard unit, that were under the command of Joseph Sepp Dietrich. During this period, while maintaining their original responsibilities, they also received a more complete basic soldier training. I'll certainly be doing videos covering that formation, so please remember to subscribe to the channel. Then there was the SSVT under the command of Paul Hauser, which included Regiment 1, named Deutschland. Here's an example of the color tab these soldiers wore. Then there was Regiment 2, named Germania, that carried the Standarte, or banner, Deutschland erwacht which means Germany awakens. And finally, Regiment 3, named Der Führer, which is the regiment Kurt, the writer of our war diary, was a platoon leader in. You'll find a link to the rest of that incredible series at the end of this video. The third group was called the SSTV, or Totenkopfverbände, not to be mixed up with the SSVT, 
They were made up of a rotation of concentration camp guards from the concentration camp inspectorate under the command of Theodor Eicher. This footage showing him is from October of 1942. They wore the death's head, a Totenkopf, skull and crossbones, rather than the SS ruins. This nice footage was taken during Operation Falweis, the German attack on Poland. During the Polish campaign, the SS VT formation was part of the Panzer Division Kempf, named after its commander. They were active in the Battle of Mlawa and are reported to have not performed well. The SS men attacked with somewhat reckless abandon, causing them to suffer comparatively heavy casualty rates. The Wehrmacht reported that they were poorly trained and that their officers weren't competent enough to lead combat formations. They were involved in atrocities against both civilians and captured soldiers that regulars believed unbefitting of the German army. Certainly their performance had not been adequate, but it's also likely that the rivalry between the branches of service led reports to be somewhat exaggerated. The Polish campaign had been a resounding success for the German military as a whole, but SS combat units underperformed and the regular army let that be known. Here we see Hitler with a group of SS soldiers after the Polish surrender. This footage shows the newly named Waffen-SS in action during the 1940 campaign in the West. A massive expansion of the new branch had begun in October of 1939, when the three regiments, Deutschland, Germania, and Der Führer, were strengthened and reorganized to become the SS Verfügungsdivision. Also now of full divisional strength was the Leibstandarte Adolf Hitler, the SS Totenkopf Division, and a full-strength police division. The German High Command had done its best to smother the development of the Waffen-SS formations, but suddenly their numbers had risen from just 18,000 to well over 100,000 men. If you like this footage, I invite you to open a free account on my website, military1945.com. In the membership section, you can see an example of exclusive film footage that my Patreon supporters receive regular access to. Please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Thanks for watching.